Hi everyone. I think this is the first time I have ever done a video review of a product. This is not a review channel and I have no intention of making it into one, but I'm taking a day trip next week and I wanted to be able to take video of this trip from my point of view while keeping my hands free. So this is what I got. Camera sunglasses. All right, enough foreplay, let's get to what you came here for. This is one of the first videos I took with these. I picked them up from an Amazon locker near where I work this afternoon, plugged them into charge in my car, and as I was headed back home, past my car wash, I noticed that the glasses were fully charged, so I decided to just turn in there and make a test video going through the car wash. I have a monthly membership, it's $17.50 per month, and I can take the car there and get it washed every day if I want, so, I mean, it was basically free for me. The time and date stamp is inaccurate, that gets changed in a text file that's stored on the micro SD card, and unfortunately, uh, for me anyway, there's no way to turn that off. Now, I may as well tell you the main reason that I picked these up is that they were cheap. Most camera sunglasses go for about $200 in the US, and these were about $30 on Amazon. I wasn't expecting cinema quality video out of these things, but I figured it would probably be good enough for I want, which is just a personal memento of the day, just for myself. And I left it running during the drive home, and I decided to do a quick test of the onboard mic. This is it. Wonder how good the audio is on these things. And that's actually pretty good. I'm never going to use it in place of the Zoom H2n I'm using to record this narration, but for a $30 sunglasses camera, I would say it's better than I would have expected. It records in 10 minute segments. We're coming up to a transition between clips. So I was rehearsing a bit of a conversation there, as I sometimes do when I'm alone in the car. But it does illustrate that even though the video continues seamlessly, there is a short dropout in the audio at the transition. It's not an unsell for me, but it might bother some people. All right, now that I'm home, let's get an overview. We'll start with the memory card. It takes up to a 32 gigabyte micro SD card, which is not included. I bought a 16 gig one at Target for about $10. It goes in the left lobe here, and getting it back out requires tweezers and profanity. Even if you're not saying it, trust me, you'll be thinking it. Fortunately, you can transfer files to a computer via the included USB cable, which connects to this non-standard small USB port under the left lobe. And I guess that's the mic there. Not sure. And the transfer speed over USB is comparable to a dedicated card reader that I have. So not too bad. It also charges via that USB port. A slow blinking red light here means that it's charging. 
solid blue means fully charged. And when you first plug it in, it will display solid blue for about three seconds. And then if it needs charging, it will go to the slow blinking red. This is fully charged though, so let's get into how it works. It's one button operation. You press and hold until the blue light turns on. That puts it into standby mode. If you leave it in standby mode for one minute, it will shut off automatically. If you give that button a quick press, it'll take a picture. If you press and hold it, then release it when the light starts blinking red, now it's taking a video, and it keeps taking the video even though the light's out. And if you give it a quick press, it stops recording. And if you press and hold until it blinks red and then turns blue, it shuts down. Now, the frame rate on these is advertised as 30 frames per second, but when I played just these raw files in uh, Media Player Classic, it said it was about 20 frames per second. Now, theoretically, anything over 18 frames per second should preserve the illusion of smooth motion, and I think this does. But if you look at this shot and see the cars driving past right to left there, you can see it's a little bit choppy. Premiere says it's 30 though, and it plays and renders it smoothly without any apparent variation in the speed. The resolution was advertised as 720p. The box says 720p and 1080p. This sticker inside the right lobe says 1080p. Premiere Pro says it's 1080p. Looking at the actual video though, it's maybe 720p upscaled to 1080p. It's also heavily compressed and definitely lacking in fine detail, but not unwatchable, and for my purpose, it's fine. It also takes still pictures, which crops the left side of the frame to a 4x3 aspect ratio, and the quality is pretty poor. And besides that, I can't imagine trying to covertly take photos with these with that button inside the left lobe and the camera only staying in standby for one minute after it's been turned on. So probably best just to use these for video, which is what I'm planning to do. And then if you want stills, you can take the stills from the video and they'll look just fine. The battery life is advertised as about one hour, 40 minutes. I have not tested that, but I'll take their word for it. Uh, as far as recording time, as I said, it records in 10 minute segments, and here we can see that a 10 minute segment is 1.13 gigabytes, so 32 gigabytes divided by 1.13 is 28.3-ish, so 28.3-ish 10 minute segments of video will give you about 283 minutes on a 32 gigabyte card, or just under two and a half hours on my 16 gigabyte card, which is fine because the battery will run out long before the card does. So as I said, this isn't really a review channel. I don't feel like listing pros and cons on this thing. They will vary depending on the user and what they plan to use it for, but for my purpose, and given the fact that they were dirt cheap, these will get the job done this time. So thanks for watching. See you later.